Stories help us reach across boundaries and understand people in different walks of life, different lands, different cultures, different worlds, different universes even. And in doing that, they help us realize that we are all connected in wonderfully mysterious, powerful ways. If stories allow us to reimagine ourselves in that way, we build bridges and we can be empathetic with people who are growing up in a very different part of the world or place. We can be compassionate, we can learn about tolerance, we can understand someone else's story, even if it's very different from ours. And I think all of that has great value, not just because it stretches us and makes us grow as people, which is worthwhile by itself, but even more because it allows us to clasp hands across those boundaries and maybe make a world that can live together in peace. We're all dependent on Mother Earth. All of us need her air, her water, her wild places, her clean, wide, open sky. All of us need this. But we have to connect the dots for people because today it's very easy to be insulated from all of that. And I find that one of the most powerful ways of all is simply through telling stories. When you tell a story, you're dipping a ladle into that big cauldron that all people of all times have poured their ideas and their dreams and their hopes and their fears into. So when you pull out that cauldron, you're not just reaching into one kind of person or one kind of society or one kind of culture or even one time. You're reaching into the great cauldron of story of all people of all times. That's why I love to mix in my stories Native American images or Greek myths or ancient Celtic folk tales all in one because they're all elementally human and they're all from that same cauldron. Any book that you ever see that has my name on it will have two qualities in there. Whatever the storyline, whatever the place, whatever the genre, whatever the size of the book, fiction or nonfiction, it will always have, number one, a heroic young person, girl or boy, in the middle of the story. And it'll always have nature as a character, not just a backdrop. The power of nature as a teacher, healer, transformer. Books like The Great Tree of Avalon, my new trilogy. Uh, there I've had the fun of creating a mythic world, but that really was based on the parable that this is the last place in all the worlds where humanity has learned how to live with our fellow creatures in harmony. All people have to somehow come together if we're going to save this beautiful, marvelous, mysterious, glowing planet of ours called Earth. All people. The stakes are now much higher. It's not just about saving that landscape that we can draw a line around and call a designated wilderness area or a national park or a wildlife refuge. We have to save it all. And if we do that, we have a chance to save ourselves. And all people have a voice in that. And so how do we get there? We begin by imagining. We imagine a different future, a different world. And in doing that, we start ourselves actually beginning to change the world where we live now. I think how we handle global environmental questions is going to not just save humanity, but it's also going to define humanity.